My name's Ian Gallagher. I'm a lecturer here at the University of Stirling in the Faculty of uh, Health Sciences and Sport. Um, my research interest really centres around the effect of disease on muscle, and that includes uh, metabolic disease, type 2 diabetes, and also a particular interest in the effects of chronic diseases on muscle wasting, things like cancer, cachexia, cardiac disease and lung disease. I do uh, quite a lot of work on high throughput uh, transcriptomics. I use uh, microarrays for that, uh, although I have done some RNA-seq uh, analysis as well. One of the recent projects we were working on was to define the transcriptomic landscape in type 2 diabetes. So in type 2 diabetes, people become insensitive to the hormone insulin, and specifically the skeletal muscle, liver, adipose tissue are no longer able to respond to insulin and as a result glucose builds up in the bloodstream and that brings uh, pathology with it. So in this project um, we were aiming to define genes that changed in response to interventions that improved insulin sensitivity in people who were uh, uh, type 2 diabetic or on the way to becoming type 2 diabetic. Uh, for us um, the depth of information you can get from the HTA and now the Clarium D uh, microarrays is uh, comparable to RNA sequencing, but you'd have to spend a lot more money to get the same amount of information from RNA sequencing. We had done some previous work on type 2 diabetes using the old HGU133 plus 2 arrays, and we'd actually found that in, in, in people who were di type 2 diabetic versus normal people, we couldn't actually see much difference in the gene expression in muscle. But our tool of choice for this uh, more recent study was the Thermo HTA2 array. Access to the probe sequences specifically allowed us to do the remapping exercise where we were able to realign probes to the current build of the human genome. And that was essentially our starting point in terms of defining um, um, probes that were giving us signal as opposed to perhaps probes that were giving us more noise. Im improving the signal to noise ratio definitely helped and it definitely improved the depth of knowledge we were able to uh, pull from the microarray data set that we had. So using the, uh, the filtering approach, we were able to ro robustly identify a set of genes, a set of transcripts in skeletal muscle that were altered by an exercise intervention which also improved insulin sensitivity. Uh, not only that, but because of the, the, the rich data set, we were able to cross-validate a number of these genes in um, the independent data sets, and of course that, that, that validation and independent data sets is kind of the gold standard of reproducibility. So this work was published during the summer in nucleic acids research, uh, a coding and non-coding uh, perspective on the genomics of human metabolic disease. And as you can tell from the title, we weren't just able to identify coding genes and transcripts that changed with exercise intervention and mapped with insulin, improved insulin sensitivity, but we also identified uh, a number of non-coding uh, genes as well, which is uh, important uh, and becoming increasingly important in the study of many diseases. We've, we've been able to examine both protein coding and non-coding transcripts, and that's certainly something that I can see uh, microarrays being used for uh, more and more in the future. Uh, our clinical collaborators keep an extensive biobank, and microarrays certainly present a cost-effective solution for a global trans transcriptomic look at gene expression differences in that biobank across both uh, normal populations and clinical populations. So one of the advantages to working with Thermo Fisher is the extensive portfolio of, of products that they offer. There's an ability to choose the technology that best suits for the particular kind of follow-up study. 